You just have to take a venture. You know what the easiest thing I use, and I've seen individuals obey the gospel and become gospel preachers? Just one little sentence. Your church is not in the Bible. What? When Caleb and Micah were in public school, we sent them to school every year around Christmas time with their backpacks. $20. $20 bill in the backpack. Give it to any kid that can show Christmas to you in the Bible. Man, don't you know them kids went home, told their mom and daddy, boy, at school's got $20. He said he'd give it to us if we could show Christmas. Tell, tell us where it is. You know what they did? We had their own parents preaching to them the truth. Well, baby, it's not really in the Bible. What? Jesus wasn't born on the 25th? Well, what's next? The two fairies not real? Oh, y'all had heard that commercial, hadn't you? A woman come up in our parking lot wanting to get crazy on us, and she told Charles on the news, on the buzz, Johnny's telling kids not to listen to their parents. He said, the tooth fairy's not real, and Santa Claus is not real, and the Easter Bunny's not real. And Charles is an atheist. He don't care. He said, well, ma'am, they're not true. Everybody in the county heard that. And you know what? You know what? Uh, just a chance, y'all. Just a venture. We got her calmed down because her daughter had obeyed the gospel, which meant that it's likely that she wasn't going to get to be around her granddaughter because as crazy as she was acting. And I invited her to come down and watch the buzz. Y'all getting this? Come on down in the basement. The buzz will be coming on. And I told her, I have talked to Charles. And I've told him to take the bad stuff out where you're using the F word and all kinds of other stuff. Because it was a family program. So he did that favor for me. He made it daytime TV. And she came down the basement. And she saw herself saying all of that foolishness. You know what she said? She said, do I really look like that? And her daughter said, yes, Mama, you do. And she obeyed the gospel and her husband. Well, you might say, well, where are they? That's not my business. My business is planting and watering, but she's got relatives up under this tent right now. We tried, and the devil pulled harder, but you see what we started with, don't you? That's pretty crazy, wasn't it? come up on a parking lot the news is there and so she got ready to leave and she ended up saying you know I can't leave I called the police I got to wait for them to get here so she had to sit on our parking lot and wait till the police came and said well I'm not mad at them anymore now y'all that was a venture I don't re remember why Charles was there but I know where we had been we had been in Elizabeth and Tennessee upside Bristol trying to catch a gospel preacher who is fellowshipping Bear Valley, Memphis School of Preaching, he's from Memphis School of Preaching, fellowshipping Bear Valley, fellowshipping Southeastern College down in Terrell, Texas, fellowshipping Oklahoma Christian University, Abilene University, Pepperdine, Freed Hardeman, you name it. We just took a chance. And what ended up happening is we got him on video hiding over in a corner, and those folks surrounding us just like the Baptists do, just like the Pentecostals do when we go to their place. Just a venture. When we come home, we got that lady on, on video, and then she ended up obeying the gospel. We're just taking chances. You know, it could be that that's what a person is thinking when they think about not doing something. They say, well, y'all are taking chances. Hello. We are taking chances. We're taking chances even being here. You are too. We're parked right in front of a beer joint. Did that give anybody pause when y'all drove up? Man, I wish you would have come earlier. We'll get, we'll get with you. Well, so what are we going to do? Well, only thing I know to do is put the scripture on the behavior of the folks that are acting up and make one last effort at helping individuals to realize that we are not this and this is the stuff that you need to look out for. is for me is not against me. If these people are for God, how in the world could
the against Jesus. Wait now, oh God. wait now. Now, in, in fact, does that passage mean that everybody that says, therefore, Jesus really is? Jesus said, he who is for okay, me is wait. not against me. Okay, now wait now. If you're in church wait. and you're serving God, you're not supposed to be against him if okay. you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't Jesus also say, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is really with him? Only those who are willing to do what the Bible says. If you says. are in church and now, you have been overtaken by the Holy Ghost. Where did you get that terminology? Where do I get the terminology? Yes, where does the have Bible you say? Have ever been filled with the Holy Ghost? Okay, ma'am, I'm going to read the Bible. Are on, you filled with the Holy Ghost? Okay, ma'am, how about you? Now, what we're talking about is overtaken, okay? Look here. Acts 19, 13. I have heard of people being overtaken with the Spirit. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them. That's the only time that you're going to hear about spirits overcoming. It's going to be false ones. The Holy Spirit makes you smart. It makes you get up out of the dirt and stop rolling and gibbering. It educates you. That's why we're here using these scriptures. Now, y'all, you don't know this. Some of you don't. But I basically need you to help me tonight. It's 830, and this is going out all over. It's going on Facebook. My mama's watching this. It's going on YouTube. And folk need to hear this. Ben, do they need to hear this? They need to hear the work we're doing up here, that y'all are doing. They need to know that this is not some farce. Overinflated is what they say down in Portland these days. They've inflated the work. How can you inflate the debates? How can you inflate the individuals that come from as far away as Kentucky and Boston. I bet y'all wish y'all didn't come, didn't you? Not you, Debbie. So, that's why we're doing this and that's why we're staying and some folk drove all the way from one way from Winston-Salem. You need to get your money's worth, don't you? All right. Let me read the Bible. I want to know if you're no, you don't want to. No, you don't want to hear what the Bible says. I want to hear it. I read it every day. Of okay, my life. listen to this. In 1 Corinthians 14 32, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophet. You cannot be overtaken by the spirit to the degree that you lose control. Didn't you just say subject to the prophet? That's right. The, if the prophet is in charge of that service, then they're subject to it. No, the, it said the spirits, not persons, it said, and actually what he's decreeing is that one person speak at a time, and if another person has a prophecy, let him set still. And someone like you might say, well, how can I set still the prophet? The Spirit took over. Verse 32 says, the spirits of the prophet now are you're talking subject. About tongues. No, I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about prophecy. I'm talking about people that are, are rolling in the floor okay. the power of the Holy Ghost no. upon them. Okay, ma'am. Now there you have it. People rolling in the floor have been overcome with the Spirit. Y'all, I, I, like I like it when I see, like, uh, uh. People have lost their mind when they're down rolling in the sawdust and in the hay. And the women used to, Pentecostals all wore, wore dresses, right? So they had to bring in sheets and blankets. Well, why do you need sheets and blankets? Man, it's hot out here. Coming up in here with a blanket. 85, 90 degrees. Well, what do they need them for? Well, see, the Spirit comes on you, and you're slain in the Spirit, and you're rolling around without your mind, and you got a dress on. Some guy has got to cover you up because you ain't got sense enough to do it. And so they carry sheets and blankets. Now, y'all, this is what gets me. And, yes, we're poking fun at them, but it's, it's, it, it's because it is serious. Sometimes truth is best received in jest. You ever kind of... Laugh when you tell somebody, you need to stop that, you know. 
Well, that person may be bigger than you. The truth, sometimes you have to help people with it. Now, here's my thing. I can't figure out why folk don't carry sheets down the food line, the Walmart. Y'all don't ever have the spirit in food line in Walmart? No, it only happens out under a tent or when we get in our church building. Well, that's a pretty weird spirit y'all got there. It's not universal. It never gets outside the building. Sounds like some preachers in the church of Christ. Man, see what I'm saying? She just told it. Those people rolling down on the floor needing to be covered up. Have the Holy Ghost. Now, now y'all, I'm doing this on purpose because folk where this, where this man preach, they watch it. Folk where this man preaches are probably watching tonight. Now, he comes to Virginia and gets on television with me and goes door knocking and gets all up in the action. But when somebody needs a question answered where he preaches, there's the answer man right there. And that's why he's sick. I'm not trying to tell you guys don't call him no more, but I'm saying when you multiply yourselves by two or 3,000, we have almost 4,000 subscribers, and they call up when they got a, a problem. And so they're calling him, and here's your man on television with us, but he's not out front in Oklahoma. Take a listen. Okay, tell us. It's like that you have an attack. Tell us who you are. African Go ahead. Go ahead and tell us who you are. And I'm talking to you direct. What you're doing is not right, and I don't mind telling you who I am. But I okay, well, tell it. us who you are. Go ahead and tell us. Arthur Cruz. Is Arthur my... Cruz. Anybody know Arthur Cruz? I had forgotten about this call. You know Arthur Cruz? Okay. Where are you, Arthur? Are you a, are you a person from Danville? What you're doing is not right. And who gives you a friend, somebody else's personal asset, and to come on public television to someone else? It's not right. Oh, really? It's not right for me to go on this website that public. is actually a public, public website. Public. Anybody, public. At, public. sir, just public. wait. I'll let you talk. Public. Just wait. Sure. Just wait. I can go down to the public library. I can turn on the public computer. I can get on this public website. And anybody in Martinsville and Henry County can look up Arthur Cruz. They can look up Johnny Robertson. Are they looking up John Cha Cha? Now, hell, who gives you the right to say but, I shouldn't do it? But how many but, people are doing but what you're doing? I want you to publicly. answer. I want you to answer the how question. How many people are doing what you're doing publicly? A lot of people. Appears, and it is. Sir, it appears that what you're doing is that you're trying to attack and tear down African American. Oh, oh, good evening. Um, I was just calling to say that um, I'm an African American woman and I do attend a Baptist church, but I wanted to say to that caller that what he said is absolutely not true. I've watched your show many a times and you do not discriminate against sex, race, color, anything. You give it to all of them. Okay. So well, I just thank you for your honesty. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you much. Appreciate the call. How about that? Have the Baptist taken up for us, and this guy here won't come help us anymore. So here's the question tonight. Is somebody ready to come out of this stuff? We took a chance. It's Wednesday night, isn't it? I have lost track. Is it Wednesday night? Wednesday night. We took a chance that somebody would be willing to come out to a tent during the corona. And we were right. We've had individuals come out. Maybe Sunday night we didn't have anybody because everybody thought we wasn't going to have the tent. That was our mistake, our bad. But tonight, folk have come out different places. And the question is, would you do what individuals actually are told to do by the most prominent individual in the New Testament, wrote the most of the, the letters. Now, remember this. This is all you got to remember. If you don't mind rolling around on the floor in your dress, we always say, we try to figure out why people won't obey the gospel. 
Well, we say sometimes women are worried about how their hair is going to look. Well, I know if you're a Pentecostal tonight, you're not worried about your hair because you roll around on the floor and have to be covered up with a sheet. Now, if you'll do that, and the Baptist folk, they're doing it too these days. Are the Baptists turning into Pentecostals? They are wild. They do the same stuff, jump up on the Lord's Supper table, jump up on the pews, run around the building. If you don't believe it, go over to Peaceful Baptist sometime on Berry Hill. It's just about two miles into Berry Hill, if it's even that. And you go in there on a Sunday night or revival time if you want to see a show. And they'll be running around the building. We have video of it, and you say, well, it didn't do you any good. Did we not baptize one of the ladies that was at that circus? If you are willing to do all that, I can't figure out for the life of me why you would oppose being baptized, especially when Saul of Tarsus is your example. You don't have a church in the Bible, and if you are a Baptist, your church is changing its name. And if you're a Southern Baptist, it's already been to the convention at least three times and got to the floor. Let's change the name of the convention. Well, what's the problem? What's the problem? Y'all, they can't decide on a name that will fit or suit everybody. Oh, how about this argument? I'll become what you are if you can show me your denomination in the Bible. Because if it's in the Bible, it's good enough for me. But since we know that no denomination's in the Bible, you think about this. I will come to your living room. You can come to my living room. And we'll sit down and look for the church that I'm in and the name we wear. And I would actually come in your living room and actually be so bold or rude as to tell you that you're not going to heaven in a church that's not in the Bible. And then I'll turn around and tell you about the church that is in the Bible. And that should really be enough to get us together. Romans 16, 16. Now this is the church I'm in. The churches of Christ salute you tonight. On Facebook, on YouTube, under this tent, in Danville, you're not going to heaven outside the church of Christ. Boy, you got a lot of nerve, Johnny. No, Jesus got a lot of nerve. He named it after himself. It's his wife, his bride, and what you in is from some man. And the Southern Baptist Convention is trying to figure out a name that will fit everybody. Well, why don't you just call yourself Christian? That's what they were in the New Testament, Acts 11, 26. And he had found, when he had found him, he brought him unto, unto Antioch, and it came to pass the whole year they assembled themselves with the church, and they taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. You might say, that, that, that's not going to get a hold. Let me tell you what. Taking a chance, you don't ever know what taking a chance will do. Not going to get a hold, you say? By the time Paul was in jail and preaching to Agrippa, I say it got a hold, don't you? Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Ain't no Baptist up in here. Well, there's one. That's all there was, was John. And your favorite book, John 3.16, the book of John does not contain John the Baptist once. It's just John. And it said he baptized. But John the Baptist is not in John. So you can forget that John 3.16 stuff. It's not in there. And faith only is not in there either. Isn't this simple, man? This ought to make you just say, how old am I? They said they won't baptize kids. How old you got to be? Well, i tell you this. I was already in the right program. Here's a clue. For you folk that are baptizing kids, John Shannon called me today, did I tell you? He said, Johnny, do y'all mind if I talk like him? Johnny, I was talking to you the other day, and he said, uh, I'm talking to you again about it. He said, you were right. You said it, and you was right. 
we shouldn't be baptizing all these kids because they done grown up and they're not converted and they're causing a whole lot of trouble in the church. See what I'm talking about? Well, how old do I have to be? Well, let me ask this. You going to ask your mama if you can be married? Mama, I'm going to get married. Well, that might be if you're a girl. Well, not all girls. Can I use one girl? Caleb's girl over here, her mom and daddy said she couldn't get married. She got on a plane at 4 in the morning in Houston and flew to Virginia and got married. That's what you do when you love somebody. You don't let your mama get involved, are you, daddy? You love Jesus tonight? You don't have to ask your mom and daddy. Are you grown enough to do that? See, the Bible gives you cues for everything. You don't have to guess. But I fear lest by any means as a servant beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, look at this. That's what the devil will do is try to beguile you and tell you, no, I can't do this. Look at this. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You are, if you're old enough to get married, then you're old enough to be a Christian because that's what we are, the bride of Christ. I know men ain't asking their mama, can they be baptized? So there's one of your cues, and that ought to shake some of these folk up that let these little kids come up and say, Mom and Dad, can I be baptized? What you talking about, can you be baptized? If you're ready to obey the Lord, you don't have to ask anybody. If you're here under the tent, and you're grown enough to take your parents home, then you are good ground for Jesus to be your king. Now, where I've been preaching in the marshals, we had young women that were 15, 16 years old, and it's hard living over there, y'all. You don't live to much over 50, especially if you're a woman. They obeyed the gospel and went home and took a beating, and I'm talking about with a stick. That's the kind of dedication and conviction they had. And we're talking about baptizing these little 11, 12, 8, 9, 10 year old and, and talking about they've obeyed Jesus. They made you happy. That's what's going on. So tonight, if you're a grown up and you've got the conviction and you want to be a child of God, well, you're talking about wives. I can't help it if God chose the figures are the metaphors. You're a child of God. You become the bride of Christ. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You're children of God. And if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. So you're children of God and you belong to Christ too. So now you're the church of Christ or the church of God. All the names that are scriptural are taken up by the church of Christ. You can call us the church of Christ or the church of God or the body of Christ. Tonight, if you would be willing to be baptized into Christ because you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and he'll raise you from the dead if you're a grown woman or a grown man and you're willing to take your parents home and live for Jesus, then you're a candidate. Here's the question. Are you a candidate to go to heaven, to be a Christian? Now, you can stay in the Baptist church. The Baptist preacher that obeyed the gospel was here the other night. That's one of the reasons he came out is because of this university in Indiana where they're going around baptizing a bunch of little kids and counting up numbers. So I can't do that no more. Not only that, I can't give the invitation because how do you invite somebody to come forward and do something when you have to just basically teach faith only? So now, after 22 years, he's a member of the Church of Christ, a Christian in the Church of Christ. Amen. Okay, I've done all I can do, giving out the Word, giving out basically the proof that you're not going to be in a dead church. Ain't nobody up in here a dead church, are there? This church is living, vibrant, Excited, tired. Y'all tired yet? We brethren from, from uh, Winston-Salem. One year, we took the tent down after two weeks, 
and came to Danville and put it up again on a, on a chance. The Methodist preacher obeyed the gospel. Brother Shannon came to town and he preached up a storm. They came in with their grave clothes on. What does that mean? They came in with clothes on ready to be baptized. Had their towels and everything. Obeyed the gospel. That's what somebody needs to do tonight. The song is, Oh, Why Not Tonight? We're going to sing it. And you ask yourself, why am I not becoming a member of the Church of Christ if I'm a grown person? I don't know, but it better be a good reason because you're going to repeat it on the judgment day if you happen to die between now and the next time you get a chance because the Lord's going to ask you the same thing. Why you didn't confess my name before me? Which I might confess my name. Well, you're in the Baptist church. You wear my cousin's name. Simple. Simple. But it is a life question. If you're here tonight, why not tonight? Take a chance on Jesus. See who you can change. See how far God will take you. It's a long way from Paris, Texas to Virginia. If you're here tonight, why not tonight while we stand and sing? Don't tell on you, Caleb. Caleb won't, don't want to talk to y'all after I got through with that lesson. Now, I heard Tanner talking like I was talking tonight the other night, other day, to the door knockers, and I came in and soothed it over, but I'm not Tanner. Listen, y'all, we're doing surgery up under here through that piece of machinery right there, and I just put my financial life on the line. And you know what? I don't care if anybody liked that sermon that's saved, but if you're lost, I know you got it. And here's the rest of the story. What I was doing is brand recognition. You recognize a brand? What kind of refrigerator did you go and get? Honey, I want a Frigidaire. See what I mean? Brand recognition. What's getting the job done? What does the Bible say? Right? Now, here's the rest of the story. Those young women that came to be baptized in the marshals went home and took a whooping, a beating with a stick. And then I taught their parents, and they became Christians too. Now I'm going to give you one more chance, because the Lord is never closed. You don't have to obey tonight during right now, but if you call, now you're going to have to call Lori's number, because I'm telling you, I'm going to sleep. This has been a hard day. I will take on your parents for you if you obey the gospel. That's brand recognition. And if you're here and you're a young person, your parents probably already know about me. And if they're watching, they're probably thinking, what in the world? My baby's down there. Well, if your baby's down here, there ain't no worry because I ain't baptizing babies or little kids. But if you're a grown-up, and you can take on your parents for the truth, for Jesus' sake, and get out of a man-made church that won't do nothing but take your money. Then I'm your man, and this is the church that you need to be in. Amen? That was not a very good amen. Okay. I had one other thought. You know... Caleb was looking for a picture of me. I was wanting to show these fellas from Massachusetts, Boston. Got their minds on motorcycles. We fixing to go. I was going to show them a picture of myself when I went to prison. I look just about like this fellow right here. Your name Anthony? I look just about like Anthony. Now before I went into jail, I looked like Sean here. I had a whole head full of hair down the middle of my back. They took care of that real quick. And then I looked like Anthony with his hair cut. The Church of Christ can help you stay out of jail. But more importantly, the Church of Christ can keep you out of hell. You're headed to hell if Jesus is not your Savior and your King. Now, we don't have another invitation song to sing. We're going home. You got anything you want to say? Well, then, I'll door knocking at 930. Okay, we're dismissed. Let me say a prayer. Our Father in heaven.